Hello, my name's Robin and I'm a normal alcoholic. So, can an alcoholic climb V5? Well, <laughs> that's not actually the point of this video. I can climb V5, just about. There's one V5 down there at the moment, which I did the other day. But that's not the reason I'm here today. Um, I did actually reach out to a couple of climbing YouTubers, but they'd never responded. Probably because I'm a little bit small fry and maybe having an alcoholic on their channel isn't the image they're going for. But uh, Hannah and Louie, you missed out. <laughs> anyway, the reason I'm here is for a couple of things. Firstly, it's that I don't think it can be stated enough, the benefits of exercise in recovery. Now, obviously when you first start out, I'm talking like the early days, if you're still in withdrawal or like kind of the first four to six weeks, you really want to take things easy. You know, your body is going to be struggling. You're, if you're a heavy drinker and you've only just detoxed, you're going to have shakes for maybe a month and kind of you're going to notice the physical effects of that for about two. So. You don't want to start doing bouldering in your very early days. But getting fit, you know, I don't have to tell you there's enough studies, enough people out there talking about how the endorphins are good for your body, they're good for your mind. You know, being able to get into something and find your health and fitness come back is just, it's, it's almost a requirement for having a healthy, enjoyable life. Now for me, I used to climb a bit in my earlier years, so climbed a bit in my teens, uh, climbed a bit in my 20s, um, and thankfully uh, about probably four or five months after I got sober, I found out about this place, which is really close to me, it's yonder. Um, and for me, like I say, it was good to get back into something that I used to do. The weird, the weird thing is actually, I, I remember doing this in my 20s, that I actually stopped climbing because of drink. You know, I used to go to the wall after work to meet friends, have a bit of a climb, but most of it was actually just an excuse to be somewhere and then have a drink afterwards. But towards the latter stages of my alcoholism, I was noticing the shakes all day long. It was when the, it was when that physical dependency was starting to increase. And it meant that as soon as you start doing kind of even mildly exerting physical exercise, you notice the loss of control in your muscles. So I stopped doing something I love because of drink. And I don't think that can be understated. You know, I didn't admit it to myself at the time, but it was later on when I look back, I go, I went, to, I went to climb so that I had an excuse to drink after, and I stopped climbing because the drink was getting too much. Not only is climbing good to improve your general fitness and obviously the endorphins, but for me in particular, it's good to have goals that you can set yourself. You know, I think, obviously in all sports, you can have achievable goals and you know you can set them as, as as easy or as difficult as you want you know each time you come to the wall I go right I'm gonna make sure that I at least do one more climb that I couldn't do last time you know it doesn't have to be a higher grade I mean as I say I've been doing this for two and a half approaching yeah two and a half years the learning curve with climbing is very quick to start and then gets very slow very quickly. <laughs> you know, I improved from doing V2s and 3s to doing V4s in a matter of months and it's been another two years of getting comfortable on 4s and gradually doing 5s. But anyway, I can set myself a little goal every time. I can focus on different things. I can focus on my fingers, my footwork, my upper body strength. I can always come here and make sure that I've achieved a goal, which is great because 
in active alcoholism, I wasn't achieving much at all, if anything. So some of you probably have a similar experience. There will be something you did before you started drinking that you stopped because of drinking. You might not want to admit you stopped because of drinking, but the reason's there. And a great goal to have is to get back into that when you're ready. Like I said, not the first couple of days or weeks. Give yourself a couple of months of sober life before you start trying to exert yourself. But then there's the social aspect. There's a lot of people I get to chat to here, you know, meet up with them regularly to climb. You can project boulders with people. We call the roots problems because they are a problem that has to be solved. And there's not always one solution to it. There's going to be different ways of getting from the bottom to the top. And, you know, depending on your strengths or weaknesses, different ways are going to suit you. So it's a, a mental challenge and a physical challenge. So you can get a boost off of both of those for, for finishing a new climb. So this was also an opportunity for me to show you outside of my flat, outside of that one same wall that you see every time. And yeah, this is somewhere I come a lot. So here you go. I'm going to film myself doing a couple of climbs here, nothing major. I would film that 1v5 down there, but I can't actually take my camera onto the mats down there. So I'll get a bit on tape, show you what I do. And uh, yeah, I hope you find something that you can get back into in sobriety, either something you lost because of your drink or something that you can just take on a new challenge and be proud of yourself, feel like you've done something worthwhile, achieved something that you couldn't achieve while drinking, and take that confidence into the rest of life with you. Remember the clicky stuff, like, subscribe, all that. Otherwise, catch you soon. Bye.